Welcome to my channel, American Report. Subscribe to my channel for news updates all around the world. Let's dive into the world of the tiny tech that's become the center of a fierce global power struggle, semiconductor chips. These minuscule marvels, often no bigger than a fingernail, are the unsung heroes powering our modern lives and shaping the future of nations. These microbrains are everywhere. They run everything from your smartphone and laptop to your car's navigation system, smart refrigerators, and even the most advanced medical equipment. Without them, the digital world as we know it would grind to a halt. For decades the United States held the upper hand in chip design and the sophisticated tools needed to manufacture them. American companies set the pace, and the world followed. But in 2022, everything changed. The US government slammed the door on China, cutting off access to the most advanced chips and the machines that make them. Washington's move was driven by fears that China's rapid advances in artificial intelligence and military technology could tip the global balance of power. By banning the sale of top-tier AI chips and the equipment to produce them, the U.S. aimed to freeze China's technological progress in its tracks. The U.S. bet big, believing China couldn't build this cutting-edge tech on its own. The restrictions didn't just target finished chips, but the entire global supply chain, from raw materials to the most advanced manufacturing tools. For a moment the strategy seemed to work. Chinese tech firms scrambled to find alternatives, supply lines snapped under pressure, and uncertainty rippled through China's booming tech sector. Panic and confusion set in as the world watched. The sanctions were designed to force China back to the negotiating table, humbled and ready to compromise. The message was clear, technological dominance would not be handed over easily. But instead of folding under pressure, China saw this as a declaration of technological war. The country doubled down, pouring resources into research, innovation, and homegrown chip development, determined to break free from foreign dependence and plot its own comeback. The stage was set for a high-stakes global tech showdown, one that would shape the future of innovation, economics, and power for years to come. China's answer to the blockade? Build everything itself. When the world's most advanced chips were suddenly out of reach, Beijing didn't hesitate. Instead, it doubled down on a bold vision to make China self-sufficient in the technologies that power the modern world. The message was clear. If China couldn't buy the best, it would learn to make its own, no matter the cost. The government poured hundreds of billions into its chip industry, launching a national drive for domestic substitution. This wasn't just about money, and it was about mobilizing the entire country from state-owned giants to scrappy startups to close the technology gap. Every yuan spent was an investment in China's future independence. Chip making became a matter of national security, with massive subsidies and a gold rush of new companies. Ambitious entrepreneurs and engineers rushed to answer the call, founding startups and research labs at a record pace. The government's support turned the chip sector into a battlefield for innovation and survival. China set out to replicate the entire supply chain, from chemicals to software, within its borders. Every link in the chain, no matter how small, became a strategic priority. The goal, to ensure that no foreign power could ever choke off China's technological ambitions again. The learning curve was brutal, but Beijing played the long game, even if its chips were slower they were available, and sanction-proof. Mistakes were made, and setbacks were frequent, but each failure was a lesson. Over time, Chinese engineers grew more skilled and factories more efficient. This effort united engineers, scientists, and entrepreneurs in a shared mission. Across the country, a new spirit of collaboration took hold, as teams worked day and night to solve problems and push boundaries. The sense of purpose was palpable. China transformed from the world's factory to a tech innovator, determined to break free from Western dependence. The country's industrial landscape began to shift, with more focus on research, development, and homegrown breakthroughs. The gamble was huge, but the alternative, permanent technological subordination, was unthinkable. For China, the stakes were nothing less than its future as a global power. Every chip produced was a step toward independence. The race for self-reliance was on, and the world was watching to see if China could pull off the impossible. Enter Huawei, the company the US tried to bury. Cut off from Google and advanced chips, Huawei should have faded away. Instead it doubled down on R&D, 
creating its own high-end processors like the Ascend 910C. Produced by SMIC on a 7nm process, the Ascend chip now rivals NVIDIA's China-only models. Huawei's workaround? Massive clusters of domestic chips, networked to match the power of fewer superior US chips. This brute force approach turned a hardware weakness into a systems engineering win. Huawei became the backbone of China's AI ecosystem, offering hardware, networking, and software, all homegrown. Now, Chinese tech giants have a real, sanction-proof alternative. Huawei didn't just survive, it became the fortress of China's tech ambitions. Here's where the US plan backfired. Sanctions were meant to protect American firms, but Nvidia's China market share crashed from 95% to 50%. Banning U.S. chips created a vacuum, Chinese firms like Huawei rushed in, and desperate customers gave them a shot. NVIDIA lost billions, and U.S. companies lost their edge. Meanwhile, China's entire chip ecosystem exploded, with domestic suppliers booming thanks to a captive market. The U.S. accidentally built the world's biggest incubator for its own rivals. Instead of hobbling China, sanctions fueled its rise and cost American firms dearly. The intended checkmate became a catalyst for China's tech surge. The lesson, never underestimate a determined competitor. The numbers tell the story. China's chip industry is booming, not broken. In the face of global restrictions and intense competition, China has doubled down on its ambition to become a semiconductor powerhouse. Factories are running at full capacity, and the country's determination to achieve technological self-reliance is stronger than ever. By 2024, sales topped $200 billion, with domestic chip production jumping from 13% to 50% in just over a decade. This explosive growth is not just about numbers, it's about a nation transforming its technological landscape, investing heavily in research, development, and manufacturing infrastructure. Projections show Chinese AI chips will soon dominate their home market, overtaking foreign giants. These chips are powering everything from smartphones to supercomputers, and are increasingly being adopted by local tech giants and startups alike. Chinese firms are climbing global rankings. Huawei's High Silicon, SMIC, and Hua Hong now sit among the world's top players. These companies are not only innovating, but also setting new standards for efficiency and scale in the industry. In assembly and testing, Chinese companies hold four of the top seven spots worldwide. Their expertise in mass production and quality control is helping them outpace many established competitors. China is building a vertically integrated world-class chip industry at record speed. New plants are springing up across the country, creating thousands of high-tech jobs and fostering a new generation of engineers and scientists. While still a few years behind the cutting edge, it's closing the gap fast. Chinese engineers are rapidly innovating, learning from global leaders, and pushing the boundaries of what's possible in chip design and manufacturing. Massive investment and a huge domestic market are fueling a self-sustaining cycle of growth. Government support, private capital, and a tech-savvy population are all driving demand and innovation, making China a formidable force in the global chip race. The global balance of chip power is shifting. Fast. As China's influence grows, the world is watching closely, recognizing that the future of technology may well be shaped in Chinese labs and factories. The gamble is paying off. China's semiconductor surge is not just a story of growth, it's a glimpse into the next era of global technology leadership. By 2025, Washington realized the chokehold had backfired, US firms were bleeding, China was thriving. The US reversed course letting Nvidia sell downgraded chips to China, but took a 15% cut. China's response? Buy up Nvidia's chips for now. Tencent and ByteDance ordered hundreds of thousands. NVIDIA's hardware and software are still best for some tasks, so China's tech giants pounced, but Beijing quickly reminded everyone, don't get comfortable. Officials summoned NVIDIA, raised security concerns, and urged firms to prioritize domestic chips. China's strategy, use US tech while it's useful, but double down on self-reliance. It's a pragmatic sprint, buy now, build for tomorrow. The message, thanks for the chips, but we're making you obsolete. China's brute force chip strategy works but it's not cheap.
clusters of domestic chips use far more power than efficient U.S. systems. China's solution? Flood the problem with cheap, state-subsidized green energy. Massive solar, wind and nuclear projects keep data centers humming, despite inefficiency. Software is another hurdle. NVIDIA's CUDA is mature, while China's platforms are still catching up. Domestic systems are buggier and costlier to run, but the government subsidizes the pain. The goal, get more companies using homegrown tech, speeding up improvement. China is leveraging its huge market as a testing ground, investing now for future independence. Every yuan and kilowatt spent is a down payment on technological sovereignty. The result? A fractured tech world. Two parallel, incompatible ecosystems. The US-led sphere, with NVIDIA and Intel, dominates the West. China's block, led by Huawei and SMIC, is rising fast, especially in the global South. This isn't just different brands, it's two separate technology stacks, from chips to software. Supply chains are duplicated, standards diverge, and global companies must pick a side or pay double. For consumers, this means less choice, higher costs, and slower innovation. The era of seamless global tech is over. Welcome to the age of strategic decoupling. The tech cold war will shape alliances, dependencies, and fault lines for decades. We're all living in the beta test of a divided digital world. So, where does this leave us? In a world reshaped by a battle over chips, America's attempt to halt China's rise only fueled a rival ecosystem. China's relentless push for self-reliance has redrawn the global semiconductor map. The US lost a market and created a formidable competitor. Now, both sides are locked in a permanent state of technological tension. The world faces a future of split supply chains and competing standards. The chip war is a cautionary tale power moves can have unpredictable world-changing consequences. The next era of technology and global power will be defined by how we navigate this new divided landscape.